questions. New Zealand continues to work strongly for a nuclear weapon-free world. That's ready. And that concludes question for oral answer. Would some honourable member care to move that the House take note of miscellaneous business? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, I want to record for the House today a great opportunity for young people that are keen to learn about politics in this country, Mr Speaker. It has had a little bit of publicity outside the House, but not so much inside the House, Mr Speaker. It's an important opportunity. It's indeed a special opportunity. I have a copy of it here, Mr Speaker. It is the 2017 Labor Campaign Fellowship, Mr Speaker. A unique opportunity to immerse yourself in New Zealand's politics. Who could regret the idea to do that, Mr Speaker? It gives fellows a glance into what a career in politics is really all about. It offers the fellows special access to senior MPs, important decision makers. It has a lecture series with the leader and deputy leader of the Labour Party, with a former Prime Minister, with current ambassadors to New Zealand, with senior party stakeholders. What a wonderful opportunity, Mr Speaker. You'd be very proud of this if you put this together, wouldn't you? You'd be saying, this is, this is fantastic. This is a great opportunity, except that it's not. <laughs> except that if you come to New Zealand, you don't get the lectures. You don't get, you don't get to, to, to join in with the Democrat Party in the US. You don't even get to stay in reasonable accommodation. You actually have to... You have broken showers. You have to build your own accommodation. And if you're lucky, you might get a chance to maybe ring up some people and be an unpaid canvassing work, sweat, sweat workshop for the Labour. That's what it is. It's very sad, Mr Speaker. And, Mr Speaker, it's just appalling because then suddenly nobody in the Labour Party knew anything about it. It was weird. It was Matt McCartan, and he, of course, has never worked in the Labour Party. He's never worked in the Labour Party. And if he had worked in the Labour Party, he hasn't worked in the Labour Party for a long time. At least two minutes. At least two minutes he hasn't worked. So it wasn't his fault. So maybe it was, oh, it was the Auckland Labour Party. It wasn't the New Zealand Labour Party. It was the Auckland Labour Party that was responsible for this thing, Mr Speaker, and they're not admitting to that. And then it was... Then it was not the leader of the Labour Party. He wasn't responsible for this particular exercise. Mr Speaker, the Labour Party spent a week denying knowledge of it, and now they want credit for cleaning it up. They want credit for cleaning up this absolute mess, Mr Speaker. But that's all right. That's all right. The Labour Party leader is out there saying that New Zealand needs to sort out these sorts of schemes, Mr Speaker. This is the Labour Party leader on the subject of uh, international education scams. The reality is that many of these students are turning up to pretty shoddy jobs, often being paid less than the minimum hourly rate, often in a climate of fear. They're not allowed to talk about what they're doing and therefore being exploited. We cannot allow this to continue. We have to look at the system and see whether or not we need to cut it back. It's not right that we have people coming here who are facing exploitative conditions in New Zealand. That was Andrew Little, Mr Speaker. And he is, of course, right, except we didn't know he was talking about himself. We didn't know it was a confession, this particular, this confession of this speech, Mr Speaker. He says, we must stop the abuse of the system by dodgy employers who want to import workers on the cheap. We need to stop the rot that sees people overseas being sold meaningless qualifications here and all the time the biggest culprits were the Labour Party, Mr Speaker. But, but they have some questions to answer still. There's a very interesting question. Who paid? Who paid for this internship scheme? It's $200,000, and it hasn't turned up in the Labour Party's donations register. Now, apparently it was the unions that were going to pay for it, but the unions are running 100 miles. They're like that guy, Andrew Curtin, that runs the place. He's running 100 miles in the other direction. So it's not the unions. It's apparently not the unions, and there are no donors that have donated $200,000. So who is the mystery donor? 
and why don't we know? And when will the Labor Party front up? When will Andrew Little front up and actually reveal the information that he's refusing to give, which is who's bankrolled this shoddy scheme for the Labor Party? And when is the Labor Party going to declare the donation that they should have declared before they started, Mr. Speaker? The, the order, the question is that the motion be agreed to. Andrew Little. Mr Speaker, talking of front...